you are watching this, then you must finally be ready to learn calculus. First of all, excellent work. It's not easy to learn all of the required algebra and trigonometry just to make it this far. Unfortunately, what lies ahead is no easy task either. So before we get down to business, let me give you an overview of what to expect. You can decide for yourself if you're ready, and when you are, I'm here to help. Alright, so what is calculus? When it comes to calculus, you'll find that it's very different from much of the math you've probably studied so far. This is because calculus is the mathematics that deals with change. Now what's that supposed to mean? Let's take a look at a simple example to find out. Let's suppose we have a car that goes exactly 25 kilometers per hour. If it drives for 3 hours, then we can find that it will travel a total distance of 75 kilometers. See? Nice and easy. But this is not the change we are looking for. Now let's suppose that due to road conditions, or the driver, the car is speeding up and slowing down. In other words, its speed is changing. Now that we have a more realistic problem, how can we determine how far the car will travel in 3 hours? The answer lies in calculus. And it's just one example where we want to be able to mathematically handle a change. Here's another quick example. If I want to model the volume of a balloon, you might assume that it's approximately a sphere. And then use the formula of volume equals 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. This shows that the volume of a balloon is related to its radius. Now, when I start to let air out, things start to change. The volume all of a sudden starts decreasing. And so does the radius. But how are these changing quantities related to one another now? What is the formula for this change? Again, the answer lies in calculus. So in order to tackle the problem of changing quantities, calculus picks up three powerful tools. These tools are limits, derivatives, and integrals. Now, there are many other things you'll learn in calculus, but these three things are the most essential. Because of this, you'll want to spend as much time with them as possible. Limits are the tools we use for precisely describing how a function approaches a value. Derivatives are the tools we use for describing how a function changes. And integrals give us the area underneath the curve of a function. Using limits, derivatives, and integrals, calculus can solve a variety of different problems, like where to sit in a theater for optimal viewing, or even how to make the perfect soup can. One of the most fascinating aspects of calculus is how all of these tools are actually related to one another. Even though they may seem completely different, derivatives are built from limits, and integrals can be viewed as the inverse of a derivative. Of course, you'll learn all of this when we start to dig deeper into the subject. For now, know that calculus can be difficult, with many new ideas, terms, and procedures, but we learn it because it provides a better way to describe the world around us, especially when it comes to change. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of what calculus involves. If you're ready to learn more, then check out the rest of my calculus videos. Thanks for watching.